Hi everyone, I'm Alison Yates. Today I'm going to show you how to make this partridge in a pear tree card, which is featured in the Parchment Craft magazine. I'm going to start you right at the very beginning and show you every step of how to make this card, so whether you're a beginner or you've got some knowledge of Parchment Craft, this video should help you. Thanks for watching. I have now attached my parchment paper to a copy of the pattern and the first thing I'm doing is tracing the words with a Secura Stardust pen in jade. You could have your, you of course use any colour you like. Just trace away carefully as you go. Here we are coming to the end of this particular piece. Once you've finished tracing with the J, just be careful that it's dry and then you move on now to trace the main image with a very, very fine black pen. I'm using the Micron pens in 0.2 a millimetre, I think. But the most important thing is to remember that you keep your pen upright, you don't press too hard otherwise you damage the nib and also to make sure the particular pen you're using is going to be waterproof because we're going to put it near water. So make sure it says on the pen somewhere waterproof or permanent. And again take your time, just trace carefully. It really doesn't matter if you wobble off very slightly because once you take it off the pattern no one's going to know whether you've exactly drawn over the top of it. So once you've done your black outline um, it's now just a question of putting some white pencil lines on the borders. And so once we've done that we're now going to move on to painting. You can see there I had a pot of water with a piece of kitchen towel and it's important to pop your brush into the water each time and just roll it very lightly on the kitchen towel so that you don't remove all the water but you do remove um, the vast majority of it. So you want your brush slightly damp and when you do it on the, to the tissue, make sure that you roll your brush all the time so it keeps a good point. So now I've applied some Secura Stardust Gold and you can see that we rub it around the edge and with your slightly damp brush just begin to smooth the colour in. Try keeping your point always to the edge of what you're working on and turn your paper, not you or your hand round, so that your point of your brush, as I say, is always pointing to the edge. That way you'll get a good smooth effect by smudging it in. Just keep on adding. If you want to add a little bit more at any time, you can do. And you can see, just keep brushing it round. Once you've done it with the, the yellow, um, move on now to the little bit of jade again. And I've just dabbed a few little dots in so that you can just add a little bit of interest in colour on the edge of the pair there. Maybe a couple of places. Again, turn your work, not you. So now add a little bit of the green again to the circle at the bottom of the pair there. Make that a little bit darker. Um, and now I'm going to add some copper, the Copper Stardust pen. This is slightly orangey in colour and that's good for, again, adding interest and colour to the pair. Just make sure that your bottom layer is completely dry before you add any more layers. Uh, parchment doesn't like too much water and it's much better to let each layer dry thoroughly before trying to add any more colour or any more layers. So make sure that that yellow underneath is completely dry before you start adding all these colours. And again, just add more colour if you want it anywhere. If you haven't got quite enough of the golden yellow on there, you could always add a little bit more, um, as I'm doing in this case here, just making that side of the pear a little bit more yellow in colour. So I'm adding quite a bit of colour there. And again, just with your brush, smooth it over, maybe just dragging into the, little, into the centre a little bit. These Stardust pens are so well behaved on parchment it's a really good technique to, uh, to introduce you to painting, really. So now we're going to move on to a leaf and we're going back to the Jade Stardust pen again. And you can see I put a little bit of the colour near to the edge of the leaf and then just again smooth your, your colour around with the point of the brush 
you can see also um, when you're painting there with your brush that you're not just using the tip you're actually bending the bristles slightly down so the tip remains on the point uh, on the edge of the leaf sorry and you just bend your bristles a little bit so that you are smudging that color in and you get a, a lovely um, shaded effect from dark on the edge of your leaf to light on the inside. Can you see the bristles bending there and you can also do little circles or you can move back and forth to help smooth the paint around. So the lovely thing about parchment is that it is smooth and you can therefore move your colour and your paint around. So now we're going to start colouring the stems and I'm using two colours here. I'm going to do a little bit with the jade again on the underside of each stem <clears throat> and then a bit later on I'm going to use the copper on the top. So I'll just let you whiz through that. So now we're going to start colouring the partridge itself. Now this is where um, I'm going to show you another little technique. We are going to put the um, clear stardust pen over all the partridge first. Because I couldn't quite get the colours I wanted out of the stardust pens I had, I had to then resort to felt tip pens. But to give it the same effect as um, I've been using with the coloured stardust pens, we put the clear on first. So again you just need to keep working and colouring that, that clear all over the partridge and using a slightly damp brush again just brush over the top. You don't need to worry about keeping um, <clears throat> your point to the edges in this instance because you actually want the colour all over it. So now we've got um, my felt tip pens now and I'm actually using the felt tip pen direct to paper here because I want quite an intense colour and that's a nice red colour going on for the beak and around the eye and of course on the feet. So once we've done the, the eyes, the beak and the feet we're going to move on to the feathers here. I'm just basically tracing over the top or just to the left hand side of those wiggly black lines there with a thin um, line of red. Now that's important just to let that dry because in a minute we're now going to go back and I'm sorry my hands in the way here. Um, I've got a brown um, going right next to it. Hopefully you'll be able to see in a minute if my hand gets out of the way that I've put a little brown line right next door to the red lines. This gives that distinctive colouring of a partridge. Now we're going to move on still with the brown and put a little bit of colour again on the head there and again just smooth that brown colour across the top of the head. And again more colour on the back of the body, smoothing it in. I'll let you just carry on watching this.
So now I've got the black felt tip pen and we're putting in the little lines to the side of the eye and then just adding dots again. Sorry, my hand's in the way. I'm going to have to learn how to not get the hand in the way. But put little dots on the, the lines that are coming on the chest there. There's a better view. Um, just tiny little dots and then they need to be dry before you do any other work on that. So now I'm putting the black up against those red feathers that we did earlier and again smoothing that black over the chest of the partridge making sure that it's nice and smooth with the grey and like it comes out like a grey colour. And this time I am actually dragging the colour down the chest or up the chest, can you see, rather than going around a shape because there isn't a shape there to actually go around. So I wanted the colour to fade gently from the red feathers up and just adding a little bit that's what's left on my brush in between those black dotty lines. So now we've finished the painting, it's all thoroughly dry and we're now moving on to the back of the parchment. I've got a green colour polychromos pencil. You could use your Dorso pa oil pastels or other oil pastels that you've got. We're just going to um, carefully colour some in. Try not to um, press too hard because if you do you might accidentally emboss it. I've got my kitchen towel which is folded into quarters and then half again and rolled up which then goes into a little pot, pot of your blending medium, something like zest it or barbecue lighter fuel, that kind of thing. You then rub across your parchment and the idea is to get a deeper shade on the edge of your square than on the inside and we want it blended beautifully. So use the flat of the tissue to really blend it over and um, add as much or as little blending medium as you need to make it work properly. My pot of blending medium is a little bit dry at the moment so I have to keep dipping into it. If it's not that dry then of course you'll probably find that um, you won't need to put so much in. If you get any on the edge of your, at the outside of the border, just get some clean tissue and wipe it away or use an eraser. Now we're moving on to the grid. So I've positioned my parchment um, upside down onto my bold straight grid and I'm using a small embossing tool to emboss a row of dots on the white pencil line that you've done. You might like to um, do as I've done here and leave a gap at number 9. So in other words you emboss 9 dots leave a gap for number 10. That way you can count whether you very quickly whether you've got the same number um, between or the same number of dots on each side so it makes it even. If you're doing a square then you know you've got say a hundred dots one side and a hundred dots another side. So it, it's a good little tip to do. Um, I've actually now put two rows of dots around the outside um, which I thought needed it. So once you've done that you take it off the grid and you take your eraser and you, raise, you rub out those white pencil lines. Very important to do that. And then once you've done that, we're going to now put it onto the embossing pad and start embossing the rest of the design. Um, using the mega ball tool, the six millimeter ball tool, start by lightly rubbing over that pair. Sorry about my head in the way there. Um, it's not a heavy pressure, it's a very light pressure and you just keep rubbing over it. So what you're doing is you're gradually breaking down the fibers of the parchment so that they stretch lightly. The idea with this is to give it a little bit of shape on the front. We don't want it a real bulbous shape and you need to build up the layers really, really slowly. I'm not going to use any other ball tool on those pairs at all, just that mega ball tool. <clears throat> and again, using the mega ball tool, emboss all the other elements, the leaves, the stems, Just keep gently rubbing over everything. You can always go back to it, let it have a little rest and come back a bit later if you feel it needs a little bit more embossing. 
whenever parchment's had water near it, it tends to um, buckle or crinkle a little bit. So you just need to lightly emboss whatever you've painted in order to bring it back to flat. And here you can see we're embossing the partridge and I'm using a flicking stroke now, again not too heavy, a, a combination of a flicking and a rubbing stroke, again just to gently break those fibres, just to bring them back to flat, make the parchment a little bit more white so that the, uh, the partridge colours will be much more vibrant on the front. So now I've moved down to my 3mm ball tool and I'm just embossing the leaves a little bit more. So it's had a rest and I can see I'm using a flicking stroke there from the tips of the leaves to give them a little bit more vibrancy on the tip and make them stand out that little bit more. And also you might like to put a little bit onto the stems and a little bit just onto the head of the partridge there, the beak, the eye and the white sections of the, the head. Use just gentle flicking strokes. The more you go over it, the more um, it will emboss. And just finishing off again with the mega ball tool. Again, not a heavy pressure. It's more the amount that you um, go over it that's the important thing. Now we're going to move on to the semi-square tool or the half-square tool. We're going to just perforate around the outside edge. Now we're doing it on, onto a piece of very thin foam, the funky foam that you can get, or a thin pad. And you can see I'm going one needle into the back hole. Keep your tool upright and just evenly space them along. As you get to the edge, you might just need to space them out a tiny bit or push them up together a little bit so that you get the end matching. So once you've done that, you then flip it over to the back onto your embossing pad and with a small ball tool, emboss a V shape in between those perforations. Just go over it a couple of times. Maybe you'll need to go round about twice, I suspect, to get a really nice white V shape. That's the front view showing for you. Once you've done that, you take it onto your thicker foam pad now, and um, you see I can use using a parchment protector there. That's a jolly good idea um, for all your work, really, so that you keep your hands off your parchment and you're holding it still as well. So now we've moved to the snipping using your parchment scissors or snips. Um, start with the widest pair of holes first, so just snip between those and then you turn it and you cut the, the the angle bit, the other side of the triangle and then again turn it, oh, coming into view now, and again snip that little bit. Always make sure that you're pointing um, to your work, in other words you've got the waste bit under your scissors. It's more easy to see here, you've got the waste is the edge of um, your parchment and you snip with your scissors over the top of that and bring your scissors down um, towards the paper and then you'll get that lovely little peak at edge forming and you're just going to carry on all the way around that card until the centers are done and the edge is done. If I just show you there, just cut that little bit off you can see what the pretty edge that foam mat makes. And then just finishing now, you need to find a nice piece of shaded card. I've used turquoise here, which I felt, um, well, not terribly Christmassy, but it kind of went with the, the uh, partridge and the yellow of the pears and the green. And I'm actually going to brad it on. So I've cut my square, just slightly bigger than the parchment. I'm going to pierce a hole in one corner and pop the brad through, little tiny brads, and just... Um, flip open the legs at the back. I tend to do one corner first, make sure it's all nicely lined up, then do the opposite corner, um, whichever way you like to do it, but I would advise against uh, poking four holes in at once because it, it tends to not work and you end up by having to poke too many holes. Uh, 
So once you've done that, you need to then glue it onto a square of mirror card, silver mirror card I've used here, cut a little bit larger than the shaded card, and then finally gluing that onto a folded white square card. And once the glue's dried, that's your card finished. And thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed seeing how we've done that card.